UFC Fight Night Vegas 46, Cater vs. Chikedzi just took place and I'm going to go through the entire card, starting with the early prelims, ending with the main event, giving my reaction and breakdown to every single fight on the card, and my overall event recap as well, starting with the early prelim opener of TJ Brown vs. Charles Rosa. Now, I'm going to start the whole breakdown here by just saying... Most of the fights on this card weren't very good at all, especially on the prelims. But let's get straight into TJ Brown versus Charles Rosa. It actually started at quite a high pace. A lot of stand-up. Both guys landing good shots. Charles Rosa was chopping at the legs of TJ Brown. This is something that Danny Chavez did. And they were having having an effect on TJ Brown. He had to switch stances. He was trying to smother Charles Rosa in the early rounds. He was landing some really good punches on Charles Rosa. Some solid jabs and shots like that. But overall, the main topic in the first round was the leg kicks of Charles Rosa. He landed some really good ones. I believe he knocked TJ Brown off balance with one of those leg kicks as well. Um, Rosa could win the first round. You could arguably give it to TJ Brown as well. We got a takedown at the end of that round and ended up on top. But in terms of damage, I can see giving the first round to Rosa because of those leg kicks. Then the second and third round, it really did slow down. Both guys started to gas out and uh, TJ Brown just did a bit too much on top. Got the dominant position. I picked him to win this one 29-28. He went out there and won it 29-28. I thought he would win the first two rounds and maybe Rosa would have... No, I thought he would win the last two. I don't remember what exactly I said, but I said two rounds to one. Um, and Charles Rosa had a good second and uh, a decent third round, but overall just got really dominated on the ground. He ended up on top in some positions, but didn't really do too much with it. It was TJ Brown who had the submission attempts. He had some decent moments where he almost had a dash choke and stuff like that. But then even in the third round, Charles Rosa actually almost had a dash choke in certain moments. I thought Brown won the first two. I think the judges gave the first to Rosa. But actually, now I'm thinking about the fight. I had Brown winning the first two. And Rosa arguably could have won the third. But I don't think he won the third. He just had a bunch of submission attempts at the end of the third round where Brown just basically kept begging Rosa to dash choke him over and over and over again. So Rosa kept trying for dash chokes and arguably you can give him the round for that. But even still, Brown could have won every round. Definitely 2-1 though. I reckon he got this one done. And it was a very good performance. TJ Brown looked okay in the first round on the feet. Looked very adept. Um, but it was Charles Rosa on short notice so you can't really tell. Either way, moving on up the card to another fight, which was Brian Kelleher versus Kevin Kroom. Another bit of an uneventful fight. I gave it to Kelleher, two rounds to one. But Kevin Kroom actually showed up and had some decent performance for a short notice fighter. Like, he had some good moments. Um, he got dropped really badly on, in round one and got hit with some big shots in that round as well. That I believe gave Kelleher that round in round one. Pretty clearly. Two judges gave him 30-27. I don't see how he can win the second. But again, he did, land, uh, he did land some big shots on the on the feet. And it was a close second round. It would only be 2-0 Kelleher. Or maybe 1-1. I had it 1-1 going into the third round. And the third round is where Kelleher took over. It actually looked like Kelleher was starting to slow down in the second. And Kroon was actually having a lot of success. He was a big guy. Throwing a lot of leg kicks at range. A lot of shots at range in general. Even if they weren't landing. They were frustrating Brian Kelleher because he couldn't find his way on the inside outside of the first round. And in the third round, he found his way on the inside, got some well-timed takedowns on a very tired Kevin Kroon because he took it on short notice and just dominated on top. Ragdolled him around, tried a couple of guillotines, and by a couple, I mean about 50. Didn't get any of them. In fact, none of them even counted as submission attempts because they were just Hail Mary Armin guillotine attempts that he kept going for. I picked him to win by guillotine, so I was praying the whole time that he would pull it off. But Kelleher won that fight. Good for him. I think he made something like just under $100,000 with no bonus. So, good for him. I think he made 40 for 40 plus 11K. So, $91,000 for Brian Kelleher. A very good night of business. Business is booming. And he called out Bryce Mitchell for a uh, rap battle on the MMA hour, which would be fun to see. So, we'll see how it goes. Moving on to another fight that took place on the card, which was Court McGee versus Ramis Brahimaj. Another one of these fights where it was just a bit of a grapple fest. Um, Court McGee out grappled Ramis Brahimaj. I was extremely, extremely shocked by the shitness of Ramis Brahimaj. Uh, I don't know if anyone else was. Um, I'd seen on the pro scene earlier on in his career in the regional part. He looks very good, very explosive early, good stand-up, good shots on the feet, good takedowns, good rear naked chokes, good dash chokes, good submissions in general. Um, looks great in his last fight against Sasha Politnikov, but no, Court McGee, 50-year-old Court McGee nearly. Um, just too much for him, man. Way too much for him. Court McGee showed him what the old guys do. Taught the young whippersnapper Ramis Brahimaj a lesson. 
I don't see Brahim Aj doing anything good in his career ever. If you can't beat Court McGee at this point in your career, Carlos Condit can beat him. You know? Carlos, old man Carlos Condit can stuff the takedowns and beat Court McGee. If you can't, and your Ram is Brahim Aj on the come up, might be time to look at a different career. Almost lost Jareer in one of your previous fights as well against Max Griffin. So I ain't picking him ever again. He looked shit on the feet. He looked bad. He got dropped at the end of the first. Um, just in general on the feet though. Like I was like waiting for Brahim Aj to separate against a cage because McGee was constantly pressuring him and trying to take him down. But then I realized, shit, Brahim Aj might as well just stay against a fucking cage because even when they separated and were on the feet, like it, it, it was seen as like, a, oh, Brahim Aj survived the grappling, but... It was almost worse on the feet for him because he just had no understanding of striking. And that was shocking to me. So Court McGee won. And I got that one wrong. Moving on up the card. Jamie Pickett versus Joseph Holmes. This one kind of hurt. I wanted Joseph Holmes to be a big contender in that division. Um, you have to give it to Jamie Pickett though. That fight. It was a very close fight. I thought Joseph Holmes won the first round arguably. I'm just going to double check right now to see if I'm correct on that. But... It wasn't a very eventful fight again. Joseph Holmes completely gassed after the first round, but I did give him the first round very clearly. Um, there's an argument he could still win the third, but at the end of the third, he didn't do enough. Pickett put on the pressure a bit and had some moments, so you can give the third round to Pickett. But there's still an argument you can give the third to, to Ch uh, Joseph Holmes. But it was a close round. Pickett outworked him, out-hustled him, pushed him against the cage the whole time. It's not a robbery. It's a close decision, and Pickett did a bit better in that third round especially, so... Yeah, Joseph Holmes on another level early, but um, second round completely gassed out. One round of cardio. Um, yeah, he trained his whole life for this moment, which is weird because usually you'd have like cardio for like more than a round. But again, middleweights. So there's like always like 60% of their game that's completely not developed whatsoever. Like you've got to notice that with middleweight contenders. Like they'll get to the UFC and realize, oh yeah, I need to use a running machine. You know what I mean? Like other prospects, they like go to war and lose a close decision like at lightweight and featherweight and bantamweight and then they rebuild and develop a few technical errors that they maybe made a mistake on but at middleweight they genuinely like don't have half a game until they get to the ufc like they'll realize oh yeah grappling like in the middle of their career it's kind of embarrassing but yeah he lost to jamie fucking pickett of all people so really shit for joseph holmes um, I say I'll never pick him again, but it's middleweight, so he'll probably beat the rest of the roster and go on an undefeated run towards the belt. Brunson's about to fight for a title if he beats Cannonier, so the division's pretty shit in general. Um, pretty shit fight in general. Joseph Holmes, better stand-up fighter, but less cardio, I guess. Didn't want it enough in that third round. Could have maybe tried something in the third and gone for something big, but uh, just let Pickett pick at him, because middleweights are shit at fighting and have a brush of down syndrome moving on up the card bill aljo versus joe anderson brito i picked joe anderson brito to win this one but bill aljo got it done it was a very close fight um but bill aljo won that fight pretty clearly based on the end of the third round where he got a good dominant position um yeah bill aljo wins and great call out afterwards but let me talk about the fight first because it was a reasonably okay one kind of like Bill Aljo just out-hustled him, really, in every round. It could have been 30-27. I could see an argument for a second round to Joe Anderson Brito because it looked like he rocked Bill Aljo at one point on the feet and wobbled him. But apparently, Bill Aljo was off balance and he wasn't wobbled. So, you know, you can see what a referee would give round two to Joe Anderson Brito. Round one was Bill Aljo. Round three was Bill Aljo. Joe Anderson Brito just couldn't get what he wanted. A little bit too one-dimensional on the feet. And Bill Aljo was staying busy in the meantime, out-hustling him in the strikes in the clinch. And just busying him. He was out busying him the whole time. At range on the feet, they were both doing good. But then out of nowhere, Joe Anderson Brito would shoot a failed takedown. End up on his knees. End up getting his back taken and getting punched. And then just sort of stay there for a bit. So Bill Aljo out hustled him. Out worked him. Out grinded him. Very good performance by Bill Aljo. Very impressive. And his post fight interview. Calling Giga... Any Giga Chikese fans in here? Go home. That fucking Biden voter. I'll beat the fuck out of him if Cater finishes him first and Kata did win by the way so I don't know if that's going to happen next but it's a good call out and I liked it it was very good um he said can't we get five judges nowadays what we got to do so uh he had some good personality out there I liked Bill Aljo good on the microphone honestly some of the post-fight interviews were better than fucking fights on today on today's card it was pretty weird but Bill Aljo got it done great post-fight interview afterwards 
I'll pay attention to his career moving forward for sure. Moving on. He is old though. Either way, good performance. Moving on. Dakota Bush versus Vishlav Borshev. Very good performance by Vishlav Borshev. Performance of the night bonus. Kaching. You've got to give it to him. I think we all know who's going to get the bonuses on this card because there's only two finishes and we know what the fight of the night was for sure. So, uh, Borshev got a performance bonus, I'm assuming. If he didn't, it's a robbery. Um, they should give him his performance bonus. So, good for Borshev, man. 10 for 10. Maybe 12 for 12. Who knows what contract he signed. Um, 10 for 10 at least. Plus his $3,500 Venom bonus. Plus 50k. Not bad for a debut, huh? 73,000 and a half. 73,500. In his debut fight in the UFC. 73 and a half thousand. Very good for Borshev. Um, very good body shot in the first round that he landed on Dakota Bush. It actually got a bit worrying at one point, And people were sort of hyping up Borshev's performance after the finish. But Dakota Bush, he had some moments in the grappling. But Borshev worked out a way to get back to his feet. And he showed some good adeptness on the ground to make sure that he wasn't getting dominated or anything like that. But on the feet, Dakota Bush was landing some really good shots on Borshev. Some good hooks. Um, a good knee at one point, I believe, as well. It actually looked like it wobbled Borshev for a second. And then Dakota Bush got a little bit more aggressive. But Borshev is always so good at finding those really tight hooks as people are pressuring him. He did it against Chris Duncan in their fight as well. And he landed it perfectly here on Dakota Bush. Dakota Bush came in. He landed the hook. Um, sort of started the beginning of the end. He landed some more big shots and more body shots, eventually finding a right hand to the body and then a left hook to the liver as well after it, off the lead leg, putting down um, Dakota Bush badly. And he got the finish there. Very good performance by uh, Borshev. Looking forward to his career moving forwards. I want to see him rushed. He's 29 years of age. I'd like, for, or I think he's 30. He's 30 years of age. He's just turned 30. So I don't need to see Borshev babied like an O'Malley who was like 24 when he first started out or 23, 22, however old he was. I want to see Borshev, 30 years of age. I want to see him looking at ranked opponents by 31. That's the ideal situation. You know what I mean? You want to be looking at ranked opponents by 31. Maybe at worst case scenario, fighting for a belt if all things go right at 32. So rush him along. Get him another contender. Maybe even a Jordan Levitt, who I suggested, who just fought on the December card and got a win as well at the lightweight division. So that could test his grappling. Jordan Levitt, Borshev. Winner moves on to another guy higher up the rankings at lightweight. I'd like to see that matchup. Borshev looked amazing, though, and found his finish in the first round and got a 50k bonus. So... Good for him. Very good win. He folded him badly with that body shot. Yeah, not good for Dakota Bush. Probably going to get cut from the UFC. Moving on up the card. Caitlin Shukagian versus Jennifer Meyer. I went with Caitlin Shukagian by unanimous decision 30-27. And she won this fight by unanimous decision 30-27. She went out there. She outstruck Jennifer Meyer. Basically, every round of the fight, it lasted. Um, uh, there was one round that was reasonably close, I guess, which was round one. But I still gave it to Caitlin Chukagian. I definitely gave her round three. And I gave her round two as well. Jennifer Meyer had some good leg kicks here and there. But Chukagian got a takedown in the first round. And ended up controlling that round. As well as outstriking Meyer on the feet. Although Meyer did land some really good shots early on with the right hand. Uh, Chukagian dominated it on the ground towards the end of that round. Round two, round three. She starts landing big shots. One twos. Round three, she really comes into her own. One twos. Front kicks to the body. Front kicks to the face every now and again as well. Just to mix it up. More jabs. She didn't look great. It never looks good. It's women's MMA. But honestly, compared to the rest of that card, this was the most entertaining fight on the card. Round three was a fun fight as far as what you were watching. Even though they were missing a lot of their shots, especially Maya landed 25% of her shots in round three, uh, three and 30% uh, of her shots in round two. Chukagian looked good. She's next for Shevchenko, 100%. There's no one else at flyweight. She's going to be ranked number one or at least keep her position at number two. I reckon they'll remove Andrade from the rankings because she says she wants to move back down to the strawweight division. So we'll see if that happens. She's still one and one with Rose Namajunas, by the way. So... If she can get a good win over, who knows, the winner of Zhang and Jacek, who knows? She might be right back in the mix for a title shot. So I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what she does. Um, but yeah, Caitlin Chukagian, good win. Fight Shevchenko next to keep her busy in the meantime. Pump up another pay-per-view card with Shevchenko's name. Or just do it as a fight night main event. I don't give a fuck about Shevchenko's division. Moving on, up the card, and at least not for now. There's a new wave coming. But she beats all these older girls. But just give her a rematch. Another free gem. Another few million. Because, yeah. Women are underprivileged. Moving on. Up the card. Brandon Royval. Rodrigo Bontorin. Amazing matchup. We've got a lot to discuss. Um, I believe Rodrigo Bontorin won this fight. 
Now, it is weird. A weird decision. I could understand an argument to give the first round to Brandon Roy Val because he did land more of the shots. But he didn't do it enough to win, in my honest opinion and humble opinion. He outlanded Rodrigo Bontorin by one significant strike in round one. Bontorin threw him around like a ragdoll in round one. Outgrappled him, had his back at one point, tried a rear naked, didn't quite have it. Ended up losing a position, but regaining a position and dominating on top. Finding side control, landing a couple of elbows here and there. I believe Bontorin won the first round because I get damage means more. And you could just sit there and, and count strikes and say, ha, he landed one more. It doesn't matter what you do on the ground, but it does. Like, let's say Roy Val completely outlanded him on the feet in the first two minutes. And in the last three minutes, Rodrigo was just holding on to him on the ground and controlling him. I understand maybe giving it to Roy Val still. Because he outdamaged him. He did good work. He rocked him early on. He did damage. He cut open him. He cut him open, sorry. Or he swole up one of his eyes. Broke his nose. Something like that. But when you're up by one significant strike. And by the way, Bontorin's landing big hooks as well on the chin of Roy Val. It was a robbery. I've, I'll watch it again. But it's a robbery. In my opinion. It's a bad decision. Bontorin won the first round. Out grappled Roy Val as well. Roy Val landed a couple of punches in the clinch at the end of the first round, which I guess I guess to some people swayed it, including the judges. But, uh, man, I gave that to Bontorin. One of the judges did as well, but Chris Lee. Chris Lee messes it up again. Um, yeah, they gave it to Roy Val. Second round, clearly Bontorin dropped Roy Val at one point. A little bit off balance, but still rocked him at other moments in that round as well with big hooks. Landed better shots in general. Also got a takedown there as well. Um, got eight takedowns out of nine. Uh, round three, Roy Val clearly won round three in my opinion, but there's no way. I mean, Bontorin was winning the whole round before the end. Roy Val turned it around, had some moments on top, landed some really big shots of ground and pound, but I think Bontorin won the fight. And here's the argument people are saying. They can't argue that Roy Val won the first, I believe. So what they're going to do instead is act like Rodrigo Bontorin tapped. He did not tap. He touched the leg of Roy Val once. Roy Val did not react to it as a tap. The ref did not react to it as a tap, and he saw it happen. Bontorin then proceeded to escape the position. Roy Val did not give up the position because of that one touch of his leg. If he touched him twice, I would understand it, but he literally touched him once. I've watched a replay many times. He cut his hand, and he touched against the thigh of Brandon Roy Val. He could have just been like sensing around where he is. Like one tap on the fire. All right, now I've got to navigate this way. Like he's getting a feel for things. I don't think he was tapping. If he was, it would have been a couple of times maybe. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Three times or twice at least. He touched him once. Like a Stockton slaps, taps. Now is that what we're going to do? Like he, he slapped him once on his fire. He left his hand there and used it man to manipulate his arm out of a bad position and get back on top. He didn't tap. That is the, the weasel posted that. That's delusional. He did not tap. He tapped once. Yeah, he tapped once, but not an official, I'm done, I'm submitting tap. He touched his thigh once, grabbed on, and then navigated his arm out of a bad position. Roy Val didn't see it as a tap. He kept cranking on the arm. He escaped the position normally. It's not like, fair play if he did that, and then Roy Val let it go, and then he escaped. I would get it, but that's not what happened. So... Bontorin escaped fair and square, and he should have won that fight 2-1 based on the first two rounds. But they gave it to Roy Val because he's more marketable, I guess, and they can't have him losing over and over again like he has been recently. But good performance. I like Raw Dog, but yeah, he needs to pick it up a bit more because he's getting cracked on the chin quite a bit now as well. It's not just a ground game that's a problem. He seems to get cracked on the jaw quite a bit, even against Pantoja and against Bontorin, the jiu-jitsu expert here. And even against Cara France, he got tagged on the chin, so... We'll see what he does. Good performance by Roy Val. Would love to see him versus... No, I can't see him versus Panto R2. Maybe we use him as Manel Cap's jump up. And then the winner of that one can take on a big name. We'll see. Moving on to another fight that took place on the card, which was Jake Collier versus Chase Sherman. Really good performance by Chase uh, Jake Collier, man. Really good performance. Uh, took him down. Sub submitted him in the first round easily with an arm triangle, I believe it was, that he got him with in the end. Um, and submitted Chase Sherman in the first round. Very good performance. Took him down off of a kick. Caught the kick. Tipped him over. Ended up getting on top. Right into half guard. Chase Sherman had his hips completely wrong. Like he was giving up half guard and he tried to sort of roll to his back. Like, And that just meant that, oh, you're giving me full mount, basically. Jake Collier took full mount. 
got on top, landed big shots over and over, big elbows over and over. And eventually, Chase Sherman gave up the arm triangle choke. And yeah, Collier got the one done, but very good performance. Honestly, I'm not even just saying this. He looks really good on the feet in the first round. Like, dipping underneath, really good technical stuff. He came up a middleweight. I guess that's what it's showing. Like, it's he came up actually having to be okay, even though I shit on the middleweight division all the time. He's got, like, smaller guy skills in a bigger guy's body just because he's morbidly obese and can't be asked to diet. But Justin Tafa called him out. He said, if you can make weight, let's do it, big boy. I like that attitude. He also called out Arlovsky, but Arlovsky's got a matchup against Vandera for some bizarre fucking reason. I have no idea why, but... Yeah, Collier wins, man. I'm telling you, Tom Aspinall's starting to look really good. Arlovsky bounces back, goes on a win streak. Collier's bouncing back, going on a win streak. He should have beat Carlos Felipe. I don't care what anyone says. Um, yeah, Aspinall's looking really good right now for destroying this guy in round one because Collier looked technically sound. Dipping under shots, firing big shots over the top. I think he would beat the two guys that he called out. He's looking really good. And you shouldn't judge a book by his cover just because he looks like a fat shit. He's still quite good. Moving on, up the card. And also, performance bonus for Collier. Calvin Cater versus Giga Chikedze. Amazing five-round fight. I've already broke this down in a full video. If you want to go and check that out, go and check it out on the channel. It's there. The recent video I posted is a full breakdown of this, but I'll give you a few minutes. Um, first round changed the whole fight, man. Giga Chikedze did not throw a leg kick the entire time. He needed to, de he needed to destroy the legs of Calvin Cater, and he just didn't do that, man. Didn't do it and honestly didn't want to do it. He didn't want to risk it. He didn't want to end up on the ground. And he didn't want to end up getting dominated by Calvin Cater again like he did in the first round on the ground. Very noticeable. Very hesitant with his kicks. Occasionally he would throw a body kick here and there. But one thing Cater was doing very well was switching stances with Chikedze. Whenever Chikedze would switch stances to open up that body kick and go opposite stances with Cater. Where Cater's orthodox and Chikedze's like uh, southpaw I guess. Um, Keita would switch and step through. And then Chikedze would try and switch again and find his way to that body kick off the left kick. And then Keita would switch and step through and shut that off and start pressuring him again. So very good performance by Calvin and Keita. Very smart performance as well to neutralize that body kick as best as he could, even though he still got hit by a few of them. He took him well, walked down Chikedze and beat him up badly over five rounds. Round five, there could have possibly been a finish. Big elbows from Qatar. Spinning elbows were landing all night long as well. The only round you can arguably give to Giga Chikedze is round two. And I don't know if he won round two. Let's just say that. Um, he landed good shots in round two. Landed more shots in round two, according to the stats as well. But Cater landed all of the good shots in round two, especially towards the end. He got Chikedze down again with another takedown. Landed a couple of good punches against the cage. I am just more surprised that Chikedze could take all of the shots that he did and still keep pushing forwards because those are finishing blows, those elbows. Finishing blows... I didn't think Chiquetti would have a good chin. He's got a great chin. A phenomenal chin. He saw the shots coming. He took them well. He got wobbled a couple of times. I wish Keita would have gone to the body more, but Chiquetti kept throwing a lead elbow, which maybe put Keita off of dipping his hands and sort of lowering himself into it. So, yeah. But also, Keita found an uppercut. Another big thing that he found. I'm trying to pick up on the things I didn't mention in the other video. Uh, dominant for Keita. Five rounds to nothing, in my opinion. But um, he kept finding an uppercut because Chiquetti kept trying to dip the jab. Like, dip the jab, like, literally standing there and just going, just overreacting to the feints of Kato, just dip, dip, trying to land the right hand over the top. So, Kato ended up just sort of, like, single, single collaring him, and then uppercutting from there. He landed a couple of good uppercuts on Chikedzi throughout the whole fight, started to make the reads, almost finished him at the end of round five with brutal shots. Credit to Chikedzi, he's going to have to take a little bit of time off. Not too much, though. I'd like to see him turn around in May against Dan Ige in the co-main event of a fight night. That would be ideal. Um, for Keita though, Zabi, main event of a fight night, end of April, around that time instead. That'd be great. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Overall, the card was very terrible. Fight of the night main event. Performance bonuses, Collier and Borshev for the only finishes on the fucking card. So they have to get it. Like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Click that button up there. Toodle pip. Goodbye.